In this video, we'll look at applying area loads to a simple steel structure. We'll discuss how to choose which members will support area loads. We'll define the extents of the area that the load is going to be applied to. And we'll look at also how we can assign different span directions to specify how the load is distributed to the area load members. Now this is the model that we're going to be working on for this example. It's a simple steel floor system. We have some physical members and some joists in between. And right now I've rendered this just to show that we're using I-beam sections. I'm going to start off by creating an area load only panel. And panels are used in SRAM for a variety of different purposes. Using the panel element tool, I can define this. In this situation, I'm going to use the area load only panel. And the purpose of this type of panel is to define the extents for which my area load is going to be applied. So this is essentially defining the area. There's several other panel element types in SRAM that we're not going to get into right away. So I'm going to start by making sure I left click on the colored box next to the area load only panel type. And then I'm going to left click my mouse to define the perimeter of my area load only panel, which is going to go around the entire floor system here. And once I close off this panel and click on the original point I clicked on to complete the square, it's going to generate this pink node in the middle. And this is called the panel handle. And that's essentially where we would apply properties to this panel. The next things that we're going to define are which members will the area load span to and or which members define loaded base. And also, how will the members, how will the area load span? One way, two way, in which direction? Now we need to specify the answer to these questions in SRAM. So we'll start off by actually defining area load members. And we have a folder within the My Structure window in SRAM that allows us to specify which members are area load members. And if I left click on this folder, we can see that right now it's empty. It's empty by default. Now we're actually going to select the entire model here. I'm just going to left click and drag around the entire model. And then once the entire model is selected, I'm just going to right click here and go update open group. And I'm going to update the area load members group with the selected elements. I've even included the panel, although it's not strictly necessary. I've done it and it's not going to affect the behavior. Now we can update this and it's probably a good idea to save this file. So we've defined an area load panel and the area load members. Next, we're going to define the span directions. And we can use the tool right below the panel element tool called the span direction tool. If we left click on this tool, the data bar gives us different ways of defining span directions. So we can start off by trying the two-way spanning direction. And all I need to do to apply this to my panel is just left click and drag around this panel handle. I don't need to select the entire panel. And you can see when I do that, I have these pink lines that appear to represent the boundaries of the tributary area for each area load member. I could also try choosing the short option uh, for the span direction in the data bar and left click and drag. And you can see now it's spanning between either side of the shortest member in that polygon. Now at this stage, we can switch to the loads window and actually start loading this model. So I don't have any load cases defined yet but I can go ahead and start creating some. I'll start off by creating a new load case for self-weight. You may remember from the previous video that we define a self-weight load case through the new load case dialog by just entering a gravitational factor of negative one in the z-axis. I'll press OK, and it's going to sum up the volumes and densities uh, and multiply them two together, and it will be able to determine the self-weight. I'm also going to create two other load cases one is going to be called slab live, and the other is going to be slab dead. And for these load cases, I'm going to start off by using the area load panel, or the area load tool, rather. If I left click on this, you can see that it's showing me now my one way short direction span directions. And I can see the tributary area of every single member. 
And now with this area load tool, I can enter the magnitude of the area load I'm about to apply and the direction. So I'm going to choose to enter a magnitude uh, for, in this case here, I'm working in the slab dead load case. I'm going to enter a magnitude of negative three. I'm going to use a uniform pressure and the orientation is going to be in the global Z direction. And I just need to left click and drag my mouse around the panel handle again. It's going to show me a red negative three here. So these area loads are applied to panels, not to members or finite elements. We apply the load at the same time uh, in the same way you would this band direction tool. And what's going to happen with this load is that SFrame knows which member is supporting area loads, and it's going to decompose this area load into member loads based on the tributary area of every member. Now this will happen after analysis, but if I switch to the live load load case, I can actually see what happens when we load this particular load case. I'm going to make this magnitude negative 5 kilonewtons per meter squared, so KPA. And I can choose to automatically see the conversion of these area loads to member loads on the fly. So I just toggle on this option in the data bar. And I'm also going to display the view of my member loads in the bottom status bar. So this is toggled on. And now when I left click and drag my mouse over this panel handle for the slab dead live, or assume slab live loads, we can see that it's actually automatically converted that for us into member loads based on the tributary areas. Now at this stage, we're just going to create uh, one load combination as well. So I'll go to edit, load combinations, and I'll do my standard 1.25 dead plus 1.5 live.